Women's Research Foundation is a uh, non-profit organization in Northern California and we basically do research for developing new therapies to cure the diseases of aging. Excellent. So, um, why is it important to do this and how is it different from just other approaches to just cure diseasing? Well, uh, I'm not a scientist but I'm going to try to explain it the way I understand it. We, our approach is basically, it's called a damage repair approach and it is not to um, treat the symptoms of disease individually but it's a comprehensive approach that will take care of everything at the same time and as we age we accumulate damage in our body and you know for a long time we accumulate the damage but it doesn't affect us it's not uh, pathogenic until it crosses a certain threshold and it becomes uh, you know it, it, it makes us sick so the idea is to fix the damage and uh, repair it before it starts to make us sick so it really is a different approach than the the approach that we we know from medicine in general it definitely can be controversial um, of course we find a lot of people who like the idea very much and for example the crowd at a conference like this one uh, usually it's a good crowd in that sense they you know they, they they love the idea of the future extreme future so for that we definitely need to need to live longer uh, and you know it's I think it's, it's, it's normal that people will uh, will feel a little scared of the idea um, and, and in particular what happens is that you know we are so used to the idea of aging that we don't believe it's possible um, and, and also so people kind of fight it fight the idea oh that's not possible and I don't want to live that long because I don't want to be old for that long. People don't understand that you're not going to be old and, and, and decrepit and falling apart and still be alive and keep going with your life. It's going to be, you're going to feel strong and young. So there shouldn't be a reason why you wouldn't want to do that. It's the same thing as regular medicine. If you get sick, you go to the doctor and get treated. Um, so you don't want to die. So how, what is a good age to die really? what does determine that and basically what determines that right now is the limitations that we have and we know that right now we can do anything about it so people usually choose to say well yeah no it's okay for me to die at 90 because if you eventually that will happen but if you went to a doctor and, 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 and had a treatment and that would extend your life for another 40 years and then another 40 years when are you gonna say no when are you gonna say stop uh, right, when is a good age to die, really? And um, so, yeah, it's you hear all kinds of different things, and I think once people understand really that we are about health, and we are not doing this because we believe that we have to live forever or be immortal or any of this stuff that we hear a lot of around sense, uh, but it's really about health, and uh, people spend. In the last year of their lives in healthcare, more money than in their whole lives, and uh, we want to change this. We think it doesn't make sense. We all know someone that we love that is right now suffering from the diseases of aging. I'm sure you have someone in your family or a close friend uh, right now that is suffering from either cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's, cancer. Uh, one of the diseases of the world and if they are not suffering it yet they will and you too so basically what we say is that we can change that and um, yes the life extension part is a side effect is a, a side benefit as we call it not a side effect and uh, but basically it is just a different approach to health it's 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 gonna be the the, the, the big cure of, of history. We're gonna get rid of, of the diseases that are the, the big killers. And we're gonna save lots of lives and we're gonna prevent a lot of suffering and unnecessary dying. And I think there's nothing that, that humanity worries about more than than health and, and, and unnecessary dying. And, and, and reducing suffering. Yeah, exactly. Reducing suffering. Yeah. 
Um, have you got any conferences coming up? Is there going to be a SENS conference this year? Yes, next year? we will have our SENS conference in Cambridge, at, in, in Queen's College, where we uh, hold it every year. We're going to have it. It's probably going to be around September. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Are you planning to come? Uh, I haven't planned because it's, it, I'm, I live in Australia, but you know, uh, it'd be nice because I was over in England just before and it was beautiful. Yeah, but I a, didn't get to go to Cambridge. It's a, it's a fantastic conference and a place to be for, for something like this. Yeah. A lot of uh, science stuff happens there. It seems as though more and more um, people are becoming more vocal advocates compared to what they were in the past with the sense approach. Um, coming from the science background, these days, regenerative medicine is considered more of um, an accepted, an accepted yeah, approach already. than what it was in the past. Yeah. Why? Uh, oh, oh! I thought you were saying something different. Sorry. I, well, regenerative medicine—it's been pretty much well accepted since it started, and because it's been applied to all the diseases that that that, that we all hate, and it's been used for, you know, diseases like cancer. And, and Alzheimer's and uh, stem cells more and more. So basically, what we're explaining to to people now is that we we do that. We do re regenerative medicine only that is specifically applied to aging.